Testing, testing, are we back on the air? I have no idea how long you guys were out for. My monitor didn't show anything, and all of a sudden was like, you're not on the air anymore! What, 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 fuck? Uh, it's enough, this is the conversation, we are in deep shit. It's gonna be four months before support can get out here to help us out. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. How can I fight back? You can't, really. You have half the normal complement of active battle drawings. The Lexington has sustained serious damage. You have no combat experience. There are no other crew members to help you with weapons control, damage control, navigation, engineering, or anything else. Need I go on? We have to think of a way. The crews of the Lexington and the Jericho died to give me a shot at this. You need to tell me about how to get the weapon systems online. What I'm going to tell you is how to steer that ship to a point 250,000 kilometers outside the plane of the ecliptic so you can stay out of danger. I have an obligation to Captain Dana and the crew of the two ships. I can't just give up. I am giving you a direct order to take the Lexington out of danger. Also, my script is on the table. Watch my eyes flick downward. And I'm respectfully declining to obey. I'm going to stay and fight. Who the hell do you think you are, Lieutenant? Who gave you the authority to disobey a U.S. Navy fleet admiral in a time of war? Captain Dana did, sir, and his authority and trust are what count right now. Captain Dana didn't tell you to disobey orders. He was counting on me to finish the mission. I'm going to do it, or die trying. Okay, Lieutenant. If I can't order you to pull out, maybe I can reason with you. You need to understand why playing hero isn't going to help anybody. All you'll do is get yourself killed. You also need to understand why there is no way you can successfully complete the mission. Let's talk about our options here. You could start by telling me about the mission. Eighteen months ago, one of our unmanned IX probes was mapping new jump points around the star Omicron Eridani. Well, I'd love to get rid of this alarm. The probe found a jump point that took it 68 light years away from Earth, to an unexplored star system with seven planets. The probe began a routine orbital survey of the planets, and then abruptly returned to known space years before its mission was scheduled to end. When the probe got within range of a tachyon relay beacon, it sent home a series of burst transmissions describing an anomaly under the surface of the sixth planet. The probe scanners had found a huge metal structure that could only be the result of intelligent construction. Now, the Alliance was keenly aware of the implications. This discovery was strong evidence for the existence of alien intelligence. The potential existed for finding advanced technology or a space-faring alien civilization at the site. The results could tilt the balance of power in the war with the UN. Preparations for an expedition to the mysterious planet, now called Persephone, were started in the utmost secrecy. Finally, four months ago, the Lexington and the USS Jericho departed for Persephone from the Eisenhower orbital docks around Titan. The only people on the two ships who knew the true nature of the mission were Captain Dana, Captain McCain, and Lieutenant Commander Tran. Were any more signs of ET activity discovered? None. The installation on Persephone is it, as far as I know. So what was the purpose of the expedition? What are the mission objectives? The Jericho was outfitted with an array of sensors and special instruments to use to gather data on the alien installation. She is also carrying a planetary lander, adapted specifically for the harsh conditions on Persephone. Captain McCain was going to use the lander to go down to the surface of Persephone with a team of scientists. Now these are the mission goals. To land on Persephone and see if the builders of the installation are still around. If so, initiate first contact and establish a basis for ongoing communication. If not, explore and gather data on the installation and if 
attempt to find out if there is any exploitable technology, gather samples, and return to Earth with the information. Why the Lexington? The Lexington was the logical choice as an escort for a number of reasons. She was a combat testing ship, with perhaps the finest captain and crew in the fleet. She's one of the fastest ships we have. She had also been outfitted with an experimental new weapons control system. Tell me about the new weapons system. Don't get any ideas, Lieutenant. Just tell me about the system. The system is a prototype. The first of its kind. It has not been battle tested. It also has some serious operational flaws. The purpose of the system is to put humans back in the loop during combat. The system has two components. A neural link from the operator to the ship's main computer, and a drug that actually acts on the brain to allow a direct interface with the computer. The drug speeds up certain brain functions to allow real-time control of weapons during ship-to-ship -ship combat. Sounds promising. Why is the link needed? As you know, up to now, combat has happened much too fast to be managed by human beings. Battles in space have been resolved by unmanned autonomous drones that can accelerate at 100 gravities, turn on a dime, and deliver a serious load of ordnance on target. These drones are equipped with smart computer systems capable of assimilating data and executing complicated strategies in the blink of an eye. The drones are carried aboard starships, crewed by people who make the initial decisions about how to arm and deploy the drones. Once released, the drones are pretty much on their own. For the last 10 years of the war, there's been a race on both sides to improve the battle management software that runs on the drone computer hardware. A group computer. of techies in Singapore decided that if it were at all possible to speed up human reaction times, a human brain in the loop could yeah, I know. Fucking a tremendous hard. advantage in battle. You would have to speed up thought processing and reaction times by orders of magnitude. You're correct, Lieutenant. The solution was a drug called Hype. Hype is actually a concoction of neurotransmitter chemicals, micro... Are the changes reversible? Now that is one of the problems with the whole system. No. Changes aren't reversible. But at this point, it doesn't even matter that they aren't reversible. What do you mean? The drug has a nasty side effect. The modifications hype makes to the brain begin decaying after a few days. The results include loss of faculties, hallucinations, wild emotional swings, dementia, and finally, inevitably, death. But does the whole system work for the week that you can function without impairment? Two test subjects volunteered to try it. Both were able to outthink and outfight the best battle management yeah, I know. algorithms and simulated oh, fucking conversation. equal forces of evenly matched drones. The combination of the human brain, the central okay. computer, and the back. Why did you deploy a prototype before operational testing? As you know, the war isn't really good. I didn't know the war was going badly. What's happening? <laughs> the conflict is turned into a war of attrition. The UN has more resources and more production capacity than we do. They can outproduce it as we want. We have a technological edge, but we are being slowly beaten into the ground. How long do we have? things continue at the current pace, we'll lose the war within five years. Does the UN have an equivalent weapon system? The UN doesn't have anything like the hype. The new weapon system? Don't even. Would you rather see me die with no chance at all? Not definitely, Lieutenant. You are an irrational infant. I think my irrational, insubordinate, stubborn streak is why Dana picked me. Lieutenant, you aren't going anywhere without the Entership Shuttle. 
already told me that you barely had enough oxygen to conduct the EVA to fix the comm system. Is there any way for me to... Can I dock... No, I don't think so. Can I... Well... Okay, so we made it through that part. Now we put disc 2 back in. Please tell me this alarm is about to end. Come on. Oh god, it's stuck on! Ah! Oh. oh, there we go! Now, of course, I have no idea what I need to do because I lost 90% of it to a fucking alarm clock. So I'm going to have to kind of cheat it a little bit because I lost all of that information. I'm a little pissed off about that. Skip advert. Well, that tells me what I need to know there. Hello, come here. Right, we now have a com. We have now have a com link to Jericho. On the other hand, I don't know what the patch is because he told me and I couldn't hear it. Oh, Jacob's ladder, that's right. Tran told me. Alright. We need an inner ship transfer. go back to six. Activate the homing sequence and open the doors. Well, how you doing, Lander? It's good to see you. You look a lot like Starbug. For anybody out there who knows Red Dwarf, you know what Starbug is. Close the doors. Give me some pressure. Cancel the homing sequence, even though it's not actually on. And open the door. Okay. 
This is the lander's cargo compartment. It looks like it's been configured for science operations. The row of modular cabinets and storage units must house the instruments and equipment for the science team. So we'll take a wire spool and a gas cartridge. What is this? It's a cylindrical cartridge of some sort containing gas, I suppose. Oh, that looks like... Oh, I didn't really want you to turn. Oh, hey, more stuff. A probe launcher and a seismic probe. Suppose I can put the seismic probe in the launcher. That only makes sense. Actually, I bet it needs a gas canister first, though. That's empty. The midship compartment of the lander is an odd octagonal area between the cargo compartment and the flight deck. You surmise that this area is, to, is used for the equipment and consumable storage of the lander and its crew. Wow, enough oxygen tanks to last me at eon. You have enough oxygen tanks. I want them all! Take all the oxygen! Leave none for the others! This is the flight deck for the planetary lander. Two contoured seats face f f bleh, face flight control co bleh, fa face flight controls and the curved windows of the lander's bubble cockpit. Okay, cool. Put that in there. These are the flight controls for the Ariadne. You reach for the controls and then pause. How is the planetary lander going to fly through the Lexington's massive shuttle bay doors if they aren't open? The Ariadne cannot depart from the Lexington unless the bay doors are open. Wasn't that a bitch? You mean they didn't put door controls on the fucking Ariadne? That kind of sounds like oversight. I mean, I can open them. That was not a good idea now that I suddenly engaged my brain. You are sucked out into the vacuum of space. It's cold out here, Bob! Alright, let's try this again. Okay. We need to attach the oxygen tank to the vacuum suit. We're going to have to wear the vacuum suit because there's really no way around that. Because if we're going to have to depressurize the deck... Okay, so apparently I'm already wearing the helmet. Okay, I'm now wearing the helmet. Alright, you. So we're going to open the control room. Open the shuttle bay. Exit. Turn. Spectacularly, I am not sucked out into space, even though I probably should have been for rapidly decompressing the room like that. Alright, I walked one too far. There we go. Up into the Ariadne. Use the flight controls. You try to use the flight controls and find that they are locked out. The Ariadne's flight computer is still slaved to the Jericho's main computer. The only answer seems to be to manually shut down the onboard systems and bring them up again, something that worked once before for the Lexington's infinitely more sophisticated main computer system. You trip a row of breaker switches and the systems power down. When you reactivate them, the autopilot apparently thinks the lander has been brought out of storage for the first time and performs a lengthy pre-flight checklist, performing a low-level diagnostic on every single lander hardware and software system. This could take hours. You back away from the flight controls. You can't do anything to speed up the progress of the system. The lander will be ready for you when it finishes running through its checklist. The Ariadne autopilot is still running its automated pre-flight checklist. It is not ready to depart quite yet. When the pre-flight checklist is complete, you will be able to use the autopilot to depart from the Lexington and then descend to Persephone. In other words, I got the oxygen, went all the way out there, and basically got... Yeah, you need to wait. Fucking Windows takes for fucking ever to fucking boot! 
What is it with the fucking operating system? Well, we're gonna hit the controls, close the door, repressurize. Exit. That's it's absolutely driving me fanatically nuts. Remove the vacuum suit. Why would you detach the oxygen tank? Well, there was one other thing that you mentioned I needed to do. So I'm going to get the weapon system online at some point. Weapon systems are on W deck weapons base. We need to reprogram all of the missiles so that they actually coordinate properly with the uh, attack system. I kind of ignored it. What are you fucking with the spinning and the woo? I'm gonna be sick now. Okay, so this doesn't make any sense. Where am I? That's not a hallway. Oh, oh! Now that explains it. He's turning 180 degrees. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Alright. Um, which program indeed? Did she tell me? Or did the computer tell me? Oh, I bet the computer on the bridge fucking told me and I didn't hear it. Jeez, we gotta go all the way back up to the bridge. Deck one. Hype telecon. Hype telecon checklist step one. Manually reprogram all RCs. Okay, so Step it's, it's locate it's one eight z is it one eight zero or one zero eight? Hype hype telecon check. One eight zero, thank you. All the way back down to weapons bay. Sorry, we count myself. Weapons bays. Jimmy, it's time to get off! You're gonna miss the bus to school! So what, I gotta do this again?
I guess that's everybody. You use the consoles in each of the weapons bays to program, load, and hand off all the drones in storage. When you are done, there are nine active drones located loaded on the rotary launchers and ready for combat. Which is great, because, you know, if the UN comes gutting for us, I got nine drones to kill an entire army. I hope those things are carrying nuclear warheads, I really do. They're not, but I can hope. Back up to the bridge to get the weapon system online. Deck Pipe telecon si Pipe telecon Step one has been completed successfully. At least one drone is now available for telecon operation. Thank you. Step two. Initialize the Hype Telecon software, enter the release codes, and plug in the Telecon Man Machine Interface, or Telecon MMI. You will recognize the Telecon MMI as a pair of outsized goggles with a cable terminating in a standard bus connector. Step two has not been completed. The MMI unit is not responding. Please check all cable connections and try again. Hype tele Okay, I need to know what the code is. It's probably in the documentation. Or maybe it's not. You attach the cord running from the headset to a port on the console. Pipe. Step. Step two. Step two has been completed successfully. Huh. The main computer and the MMI unit are now ready for telecon operations. Pitching in the kitchen. Step three. After briefing the operator on the risks and side effects associated with a hype telecon system, prepare an 18 milliliter dose of hype in a glucose suspension. Inject the operator with the hype dosage. Wait 30 minutes. Do not be alarmed by side effects, which may include temporary nausea, acute pain, and dizziness. When operator is ready, place MMI unit on head. Step three has not been completed due to system timeout. No operator detected. Hype telecon system initialization terminated. Pipe. Step. Step three. Step three has not been completed. Operator does not. All right, we're gonna shoot up, kids. You roll up one of your sleeves and gently pull the, put the needle into one of the veins on the inside of your arm. The hypo dispenses the serum from the ampule and you feel a burning sensation. A few seconds later, you are sicker than you have ever been in your life. It takes several minutes for the clouds of pain to recede enough for you to get your bearings. Hype tele... Step... Step three. Hype telecon system now coming, coming online. online. Stand, Stand by. Oh, shit's getting woogie. Welcome to the Hype Telecon System. A series of training simulations must be completed before the Hype Telecon System will attain operational readiness. These simulated encounters will acclimate both the operator and the ship's main computer to the mechanics of the Hype Telecon System. The simulations will also provide a basic tactical training. The training simulations will use the actual computer hardware aboard the battle drone, so all active drones must be loaded and programmed for Hype Telecon operations before training begins. Control of the Hype Telecon system will be released to the operator once all training system scenarios have been completed successfully. Uh, this is actually a lightweight simulation. Uh, Real-time simulation. I forgot this was in here, but I whipped through it before, so I somehow don't think it was very difficult. I'm going to leave it, like, medium for now. Yeah, lowest difficulty setting activates computer control combat. 
deploying. Alpha, in formation. Hotel, in formation. Echo, waypoint set. Foxtrot, in formation. Echo, waypoint set. Delta, tracking target. Hotel, tracking target. India, holding position. Well, I just got my shit nuked. That was unexpected. Golf, tracking target. Do I even have any drones left? Charlie, waypoint set. Bravo, waypoint set. Charlie, in formation. Echo, waypoint set. Charlie, in formation. Bravo. In formation. Echo, waypoint set. This is really, really, really hard to do with the mouse. Echo, in formation. Bravo. Tracking target. Golf. Tracking target. All enemy drones have been, destroyed. have been destroyed. I actually made it through that, and I fucked it up pretty bad. Alright. I'm gonna go with the deploying. Alpha. In formation. Bravo. In formation. Delta. In formation. In formation. Golf. In formation. Hotel. In formation. Charlie. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Waypoint set. India. Tracking target. Charlie. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Tracking target. India. Tracking target. All enemy drones have been destroyed. Heavy target destroyed. There's nothing left standing, so okay. Oh, they're taking out the last of the missiles, okay. All enemy ships have been destroyed. <laughs> One second. Attack drone. Bomber drone. Fighter drone. Deploying Alpha in formation. Alpha Bravo in formation. Charlie in formation. One of these, I'm going to know what these guys are. Delta in formation. Echo in formation. Golf in formation. Hotel in formation. India in formation. Foxtrot. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Waypoint set. In formation. Okay, we'll wait for the last of the missiles to come around.
eventually the missiles are supposed to stop coming, I think. I don't recall. Okay, everybody, let's go. Bravo. Hi, so Waypoint set. Um, really, let's go. Information. Echo. Information. Oh. Information. India. Information. Delta. Waypoint set. Hotel. Information. Foxtrot. Waypoint set. Bravo. Information. Delta. Waypoint set. Foxtrot. Information. Delta. Tracking target. Delta. Tracking target. All enemy drones have been destroyed. Delta. Tracking target. Heavy target destroyed. Word. And then it's just the ma uh, finishing off the missiles. All enemy ships have been destroyed. Actually, gonna do something real quick. Hi, thanks. Yes, yes, yes. Set it up. Continue. Attack drone, bomber drone, fighter drone, bomber drone, fighter drone, attack drone. Okay, continue. Deploying Alpha. Information. Bravo. Information. Delta. Information. Echo. Information. Control. Information. Hotel. Information. India. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Tracking target. Charlie. Tracking target. Charlie. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Tracking target. Charlie. Tracking target. Heavy target destroyed. Charlie. Tracking target. Yeah, this is not gonna end right. Charlie. Tracking target. And there went the Lexington, so you know we lost. Alright. Uh options. It says I can set change the this, the difficulty, but it doesn't seem to actually want to let me do it. Deploying. Oh, there we go. I'm going to crank the difficulty down a couple of notches, because I'm really, really bad at strategy games. Notoriously bad. Alpha. Information. Information. Delta. Information. 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 Bravo. Tracking target. Foxtrot. Tracking target. India. Tracking target. India. Tracking target. And we lose. Jesus. No, 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 no. Alright, guys. I gotta actually get going. It's 45 after 4, so... As soon as the missile hits us and we all die... Lexington just blew up. I'm going to get on, on the road. Moving on. It's been a pleasure having you all today. Time for my normal we're getting out of town spiel. It's 4.45 here on a Tuesday. A lot of hours today, too. Well, we've been here for a while. It's uh, four hall of long, solid hours. <laughs> long, hard hours. Anyway, it has been a wonderful pleasure to have you around. Thank you. Thank you.
greatly. Uh, I am Flynn Church, and this is the Church of Flynn. We broadcast most every weekday, starting at about uh, 12, 12, 30, 12, 45, depending on how the day works and when I can. We do adventure games, we do retro games, sometimes we even do new stuff, like we spent last week playing Lollipop Chainsaw, you know, the week I got it. Anyway, uh, if you like what you see, please feel free to give me a follow there on the Twitch player. We are on Twitter at Flynn underscore Church, and when I can get it to work again, it'll be a great little place to actually get messages from. Right now, it doesn't seem to want to automate. Otherwise, we will be back tomorrow, and I hope that every one of you has the best possible day that you can have. I wish wonderful things for everyone, all my flockers, congregationists, and choir boys. And on behalf of myself and the entire Union of Flynn's, enjoy your day, and may whatever you believe in bring you the best possible future. Thank you, and good night.